Public Education and Government Access TV, or PEG, has continued to serve Connecticut for over 30 years, connecting communities with local information, entertainment, education, and a transparent source for local government meetings. During this time, we've earned the trust of our communities. We're different than commercial media. Public access stations are not a network. They are publicly funded organizations that serve each of the 169 cities and towns. While some stations are operated by cable companies, almost half of the stations in Connecticut are managed by local nonprofit stations, like the one in your community. If we're depending on Big Com, to be part of the solution of funding PEG stations. I can tell you one thing. We're going to be waiting for a long time, probably until our grandchildren have children. PEG gives us a connection to our communities. With young kids in a small farm, we are always on the go. PEG gives us the opportunity to see school board meetings to see what's going on. It's letting residents participate in community. Incumbent carriers who are making large profits just don't want to invest in our communities. They've already said, we aren't going to support you, you're irrelevant. One of the challenges in solving the funding problem is it's not profitable for market-based companies like Comcast and Charter to serve residents. Even though it's the one and only one obligation these companies have in exchange for using the infrastructure on our public streets to profit. Commercial bodies aren't going to support communities. In fact, they're actually disinterested. Disinterested in supporting the very communities that they use for infrastructure to sell their products and services. Most of us in the tech community foresaw the impending issue that cable companies were just creating new buzzwords for the same exact services, but they weren't going to provide PEG on those services or pay their fair share. It's just wrong. To be a community, we have to do this together. Relying on private enterprise won't do it. They've already weighed in and said, no, thank you, folks. Find some other way. Use YouTube or TikTok. Forget that we're small business employers and training grounds for jobs in the television field. Why would we want to do that? Just look around. Why would we want to have anything else but community TV in Connecticut? Leaving local community TV behind, communities really began to feel they were being left behind by these for-profit providers. That was really the message by these companies, the same companies that had a gross earnings of over $1 billion in Connecticut last year. We realized no one is coming to save us. We need to get organized. We realized that if our communities we get together to solve the same problem, just maybe we can fulfill the needs of our residents and municipalities. And that would take us to band together to make it happen. Everyone realizes we cannot sit back. We have to band together. The entire country is dealing with this issue. This is a challenge because of the large companies. And the conversation shifted that we need legislative help. The community TV helps to bridge the digital divide, which is really an economic divide, and the most important equity issues of the day. There are more low-income homes that are not connected than those that are connected. But whether a resident has service at home or not, they are welcome to use a PEG facility for free. Getting community programming to help people who didn't have that alternative is essential. There are no doubts about whether we'll be ultimately successful, but there's no alternative. The doubts don't matter. If we fail, there won't be a tomorrow. Total eclipse for PEG. It will be light out in Connecticut while our sister states, Maine, Vermont, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and New York, they're all supported. And Connecticut will be dark. The show's over. That's all, folks. Efforts to prove PEG was viable depended on our communities and everybody wanted it. We just weren't sure how to pay for it. I never recall anyone saying, do we want to quit? It's always been, this doesn't work, what are we going to do instead? When people tell us it's impossible, we just roll up our sleeves and keep going. Community TV is that important. We started having fundraisers and telethons. We raised large percentages of our incomes. How are people using local community TV? They're watching government and education meetings, interviews with legislators, veterans programs, health programs, cooking shows, 
Area Concerts, the Better Business Bureau, AARP, the Humane Society, and in many ways, it's like sitting around the dinner table and just talking. To be able to interface with others outside of your pod and to communicate gives you that connection to your outer community, to diversity and new ideas. Every meeting, every church service reinforce our value to the community. It's not about entertainment. The commercial entities do that. Entertainment makes profits for the shareholders, but not for the local economy, rather for the shareholders of communication entities. We emphasize the community, the hyper-local. With the lack of local newspapers, community program is really a bridge to community, and once you come in the door and engage with it, you understand the need for it. People come here and they always say this is the best community gem. And they are right, we need community TV. We have a great model here, but in 57% of the state, community TV is either very poorly managed or non-existent. And people who live in areas without community TV feel like second-class citizens. They feel left behind. But there is hope for change in those underserved areas. We always think about town boundaries. However, telephone poles have no idea they're going across town boundaries. Community TV removes those boundaries, and programs that are local to one region may also be helpful to another city or town in Connecticut. Every town in Connecticut has different needs and different uh, expectations. And as a representative of the people, I can tell you that all towns are different. One thing I can tell you that's not good for any town is the tax exemption that was given to cable, cable providers when they came to Connecticut and entered our towns in the mid-1970s. Not one cable provider pays a dime to any city or town. People with disabilities are often left behind. They're the largest group that experiences disparities in employment, housing, health, and other important factors in life. It's important to consider this when funding PEG. When we talk about connecting the unconnected, we're talking about the equality of participating in your community. We don't leave anyone behind. Finally, after all this time, after all this work, from the inception of PEG in Connecticut until now, over 40 years it took for us to be at this point. It's an incredible journey for democracy and years of hard work by so many people. The impact is gratifying and uplifting for communities. Now, it's the last piece to keep PEG funding sustainable. This is real Americana. The electronic soapbox, as Congress intended, the digital town green. We're told we are doing the impossible, and when doing the impossible, it takes us all. We aren't here to compete against the cable and telecom companies, but rather losing funds because they're using our public streets to profit and paying no public benefit fees. Maine had a PEG funding victory this past February with the governor signing a new law and Vermont is right behind them. Connecticut needs to join her sister states and support this effort for its residents. We believe we can have sustainable PEG funding in Connecticut. And we believe that companies who use publicly owned property to profit should have to pay for that right. We want to tell this story someday, a dream come true, all the work from all of us to set the stage for sustainable PEG funding. We're going to do it. It's a testament to the human spirit, and it makes me emotional to just think about it. People getting things done that seemed impossible, but putting many people together made it possible.